Fridges that know who's at the door, talking glasses and robots that mow the lawn on their own. Smart devices are meant to make our lives easier. But they are also gathering our private data. The Internet of Things is smart, but how secure is it? Our topic today on Shift. IoT, or the Internet of Things, is a network of devices that can communicate via built-in mini-computers. A smart heater, for example, has integrated sensors that monitor and regulate room temperature. That can save heating costs. Or vacuum cleaners that operate independently can save us time. Voice assistants always have an open ear for us and can even tell other devices what we want. By the way, what do you think Alexa is used most for? Dave Limp? head of Amazon Hardware, has some interesting news. Customers ask Echo over a billion times a year this. <laughs> Alexa, what time is it? Alexa, the talking clock? <laughs> the Internet of Things has a lot more to offer. From tiny sensors that measure air quality to car sharing networks to surveillance systems for industrial plants. A recent study expects that over 50 billion devices and sensors will be connected by 2022. Professor Matthias Welisch from the Freie Universität Berlin specializes in the Internet of Things. Professor Matthias Welisch has been studying IoT, the Internet of Things, for over 10 years. He's fascinated by the idea of making everyday objects smart. Consider the light bulb. You can control it with a switch on the wall, or you could use your phone. You might want to add features, like making the light flash when a storm warning is issued. But then, your light needs to be able to receive that information from the web. It's not stored locally. So your light has to be able to communicate with the cloud. The industry promises smart devices will make life easier, like with autonomous lawnmowers, vacuum cleaners that run on their own, and heaters that automatically adjust the room temperature as soon as everyone has left the house. A smart fridge that monitors which groceries are running out can be very convenient. Imagine being out of butter, and then the doorbell rings with a fresh delivery of more butter. But this also lets companies analyze which products you consume. The data collected and transmitted is mostly invisible to ordinary users. The same goes for the software built into their devices. So who has access to the data collected? And in the worst case, who can remotely control the smart devices? These are the largest concerns Matthias Velis has with this new technology. Right now, the biggest challenge the Internet of Things faces is security and privacy. Imagine someone with access to your stove. They could cause it to overheat and maybe even start a fire in your home. Or someone with control over a power plant could cut the power to an entire city. The possibilities seem endless, but the risks involved are not to be taken lightly. Users should think twice about how much smart technology they want in their homes. Family Zellerer is not too worried. They enjoy the convenience and futuristic flair their smart network provides. Michael Zellerer would like to see even more technology online at home. I want my house to be able to tell when I get out of bed. When I come downstairs, I want my favorite radio station to start playing, my favorite coffee to be brewing, and if it's cold outside, my car to automatically start heating up. Michael Zellerer can already remotely control who has access to his home. He has a smart door. His children don't need a key to get in, they simply scan their fingerprints. I can see if my kids are home. This camera has facial recognition. It's telling me that Zoe was spotted at home, and so was Alana, and my wife Kristen. Everyone's home. Digital assistants can make anything more convenient, be it gardening or household chores. While you remotely adjust the temperature of your fridge, the voice assistant is already putting together your shopping list. 
Alexa. Alexa, put butter on the shopping list. Einkaufsliste. Alles klar. Ich setze Butter auf deine Einkaufsliste. Sounds handy. But which servers do these recordings end up on? Who has access to them? And what information can be extracted from the data? Law enforcement authorities and secret services, for example, find these recordings very interesting. The same goes for manufacturers, of course. Some of them even have employees listening in, as was uncovered this year. Hey, Google. Hey, Google. What's up the calendar today? Whether Amazon, Apple, or Google, they all had to confess to analyzing and transcribing recordings made by their smart assistants, no matter how private the conversations were. These digital helpers are always on. They just wait to be activated by a special word. In doing so, they sometimes pick up on things that weren't meant for them to hear. Human workers are constantly checking and correcting the software to keep it up to date. Only humans are able to understand speech impediments and dialects. But until now, people using this technology weren't aware of their very real eavesdroppers. Now, it's become a scandal. All three tech giants announced better data protection, but while Google and Apple have, temporarily at least, halted the analysis of their recordings, Amazon has passed all responsibility on to its users. So I guess it's my fault for not reading the fine print, thanks Amazon. I would prefer privacy by default, my privacy being the default setting. People who don't mind their actions being recorded to improve their experience can still change their settings. Whoever uses smart technology at home should really know what they're dealing with. Security expert Martin Schallburg believes smart technology requires smart handling. If you're responsible for a household full of smart devices, then you've basically become a system administrator, like the ones that manage huge data centers. That means you need to treat your home like one cataloging the devices, installing security patches, checking for software updates, changing passwords, and perhaps even setting up protocols to make sure there were no hacking attempts. Good point. Security analysts say the number of cyber attacks on IoT devices is on the rise. In the first half of 2019, there were more than 2.9 billion hacking attempts. That's three times more than last year. One hacker showed us how simple hacking can be. This vacuum cleaner won't just do your floors, it'll also spy on you. Three hackers have commandeered the device. Gaining access was pretty straightforward. All vacuum cleaners by this manufacturer are connected through one data cloud. Yeah, we took full control. Let's move it. A slight change to the source code was all it took to access the controls and camera. The vacuum cleaner receives its commands through a built-in microcontroller connected to the internet. Security gaps make the entire network of IoT devices vulnerable. I can start to do commands with it, and then I can start look which devices there is in my network, and then start to move to these devices and move on. So it's like it's related to the uh, goals of the uh, cyber criminals or for, or for the bad guys of what they want to achieve, but there is no limit. The problem is just one device can compromise the entire system, no matter if it's a home or industrial network. As soon as hackers get into one device, they have access to all other unsecured devices on the network and they can reprogram those devices to launch new attacks. That makes it all the more important to understand the technology behind the Internet of Things. Matthias Wehrlich recommends open source solutions. They don't rely on just one manufacturer for security or data protection. He promotes his idea with bold names, Riot and RapStore. While Riot is meant to become the new global operating system for the Internet of Things, RapStore will provide the apps users need for that. If you're interested in the Internet of Things and want to make your devices smart, then it's important to use open source solutions that aren't bound to a specific manufacturer. And always be aware of which apps you're using and what private data they require. One possible solution is the operating system Riot, developed at three European universities. The Riot source code is openly accessible, so anyone can check it and modify it to their own needs. 
but that won't let users program their own devices yet. They need other apps to do that. Matthias Velisch wants to offer these apps on Rap Store, an app store for the Internet of Things. Currently, it's still being tested, but in the future, it will let users download all kinds of apps for their smart devices so they can individually tailor their device's features. The Internet of Things operates across a lot of different devices, so it's not easy to make sure the software always runs smoothly. There's not just three or four platforms to consider, there's thousands. Ideally, you want your software to run on all of them. Riot focuses on small processors with low storage capacity and performance and minimal, mostly battery-powered energy consumption. There's two reasons why Matthias Velisch prefers these kinds of applications. First of all, every object requires physical space that you might not always have. Secondly, each additional component costs extra. When you manufacture small-scale devices, you can't use too much space and you need to be cost-effective. The industry is also very interested in open-source IoT technology. One car manufacturer is currently testing digital keys that run with the Riot operating system. Smart and safe. One main software that keeps my network safe and makes sure my IoT devices work together smoothly. That's how I would want my smart home to be. But reality is a bit different. Manufacturers are reluctant to hand over their software. And aside from that, I think IoT devices should offer more than just convenience. They should promote sustainability. A smart thermostat that helps save energy? Great. A smart feeder for my dog? No thanks. Otherwise, the Internet of Things becomes the Internet of Junk. What's your opinion? How smart do you want your day-to-day -to, -day to be? Join the discussion, for example, here. Bye and see you there.